Hello, nerds. As you may or may not know, the Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge movie has officially been released on digital. I have had the pleasure of watching it. I have done the written review, and now it is time to do the a little bit more in-depth version, uh, the video review. So uh, if you have not seen or read the written review, then I suggest you go to generallynerdy.net to check that out. Uh, I will very likely be posting that in other places here soon. I don't know exactly where just yet, but it will go up. The easiest place is generallynerdy.net. Before we get into the conversation about this movie, though, we have a little bit of an intro to hit. Sequence start 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. I am online to introduce Generally Nerdy. 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 Generally Nerdy. I am online to introduce Generally Nerdy. Okay, first things first, I am going to try and keep the spoiler free portion because this is pretty immediately after the release of the movie. So I'm going to keep the spoiler free portion towards the front, and then I will try and keep all of the spoiler stuff on the second half of this. So if you want to listen to spoilers, then you can go to the time code, or it's probably going to be over here. Depend. I'm the one that's going to, whatever. So, all right. So first things first, let's talk about, and we'll get into the specific ratings for all of the different sections uh, like I do on Nerdy Reviews. It's been a while since we've done a Generally Nerdy Review solo, right? Uh, Usually I've just been doing the big show reviews, but this is definitely not a show or a movie that we would be reviewing over on Big Show. This is very much adult oriented. And let's, let's start there, shall we? So the things this movie does very, very, very well we have a, a coherent story, which is something that n- not even the first game can really tout uh, as being a selling point. The story for this portion of the Mortal Kombat mythology has always been uh, shaky. <laughs> yeah, I guess is a good way of saying it. It's It's been a little uncertain. Uh, and... and because in the game, that's kind of part of having multiple characters that could have completed the story, right? Is you kind of have to keep it a little vague and ambiguous in order for it to make sense that any one of these characters could have won this tournament. Well, now that we are so far removed from that first game and we actually have a story mode that in in current games that tells us who the winner is supposed to be, and then all of the other ones are still just what-if scenarios uh, when you go through the arcade tower. This movie does very well to repackage what we basically already know in a fresh new look so that it doesn't, it's not boring at all. Uh, That being said, there are some things, and we'll get into this in the spoiler section, but there are some things that they did change in order to keep it fresh that kind of... Yes, didn't sit super well with me, though, by and large, this is coherent. This does uh, go there. There's not as many plot holes and there's not as many plot contrivances as we got in the first live action movie. So right off the bat, that is doing very well. Uh, The other thing that this this movie does very well is the art. I am I am a pretty big fan of the art, though. There are some awkward looking things. <laughs> Nothing is perfect, right? So uh, Scorpion's Mask was one of the things that kind of was always kind of visually off-putting. Once he finally gets his mask as the undead wraith or the specter, whatever you want to call him, that was kind of off-putting, like I said. Uh, the other thing that I think this this show does, this movie does very, very well, is it includes X-ray moves. Uh, X-ray hits, I guess. It's not really x-ray moves. That's that's the game talking. Uh, so the x-rays are included in the visuals of this movie, which is kind of awesome. Uh, I, I was half expecting something along these lines uh, because I was told 
when we were initially talking about the existence of this movie when it was being made, and then I had somebody watched it before me and made mention of it uh, there, and then coming to it with the expectation of, oh, I wonder how they're going to be incorporated and seeing the manner in which they are incorporated. It's, it's really, really well done. I really appreciate it because it's, it's, it's a change in visual style in order to do those x-rays, which is kind of cool. Uh, so very much appreciated that again, the, the, just the coherent storyline, I think is taking it a long way. <laughs> as far as things, I feel like the movie could have done better. Uh, it is, it, it's actually more endemic of modern filmmakers that are doing uh, new adaptations of existing properties and, and trying to make them grounded and down to earth. That's not the Mortal Kombat brand necessarily, uh, grounded Yes, in more modern versions of the game, very specifically Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11, there are quote-unquote realistic explanations for how certain things happen with their human characters, but these things still happen. What I'm talking about specifically are special moves. Uh, we don't see in this movie, we don't see any human characters, any humans from Earthrealm, because technically Scorpion is human, he's just... As Scorpion, he is from Netherrealm, and technically Shang Tsung is human, but again, he's a sorcerer who has ties to Outworld, so they are kind of excused away with that. Our three main characters, though, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sonya Blade, don't have any any special moves evident in this movie. We get close with Liu Kang. We do, you know, he does do some really fast movements and kind of does a bicycle kick once and kind of does his flying kick once. And also we see flames, uh, circling or encompassing his hand, I guess is the better way to say that. Uh, we see flames encompassing his hand and his, uh, his hands and his feet from time to time, but he doesn't shoot fireballs. And, and, it seems like that was a decision that was made because, again, they're trying to make this realistic. And that kind of goes, again, against, against the branding, but also it's an animated movie. So fireballs in, a, in a, an animated movie about an Asian martial arts tournament kind of would make sense. The, soup, the, the Street Fighter movies exist. They throw fireballs in those. There's Guile is an American uh, Air Forceman, and he throws fireballs in the, in the animated movies. So why, why, why the decision to not do that? And not just that. We don't see a shadow kick from Johnny Cage. We don't see any sort of ring. Like, Sonya has her military gear. Why did we not at least get some sort of technical explanation for how she can shoot the 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 uh, onion rings it it that just seemed to be a little off to me so that one kind of set in my craw that's one of the things uh that I can talk about that's that's that was questionable about this movie uh, before we get to the spoilers because everything else that I had issues with is definitely spoiler territory so uh but by and large before we get to the spoiler section this is I. This was a thoroughly enjoyable movie. Uh, my real quick score is an A. So of you know the grading rubric, this definitely passes. It's not an A plus. I was hoping for an A plus performance. I was hoping that this was going to be almost perfect because you again nothing is perfect, but it wasn't even kind of bad. It was just, there were a couple of things that were distracting. So that being said, we're giving the non-spoiler review is getting an A. Uh, so that being said, now we are into spoiler territory and I'm just, we're going to, we're going to start nitpicking a little bit. Overall, I, I cannot stress this enough. Overall, the enjoyability rating, and we'll just, we'll go backwards <laughs> on, on my rating rubric. Overall, the enjoyability rating, we have a 98 out of 100. This movie was so freaking enjoyable, I could not peel my eyes off of it. Lord Raiden, right? Good to meet you. So tell me more about this veil. The space between realms to prevent Outworld from merging with Earthrealm. Prevented by what? Always the soldier, evaluating risks. What guards the veil is of less consequence than why it does so. If Shao Kahn wins this tournament, Earth as you know it will cease to exist. 
honestly, like I was in the middle of dinner at one point because I, I, I kind of paused and watched it over the a stretch of time. But I, I had food in my hands and was the food was getting cold because I was so captivated by this movie. So enjoyability easily. 98 out of 100. Uh, there were, again, there were a couple of things that were a little distracting. So that's why it didn't get a perfect score in the enjoyability ranking. But there's been very little in my movie going experience in the recent history that has been this enjoyable. So I, I loved it. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the technical aspects about this. And because it's an anime, uh, technical is there. There's there's a bar that gets set and it's really hard to go above that. Um, technically speaking, the 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 thing that really shines through again is the X-ray moves. They did find a way to incorporate X-rays into this. It's a great thing to have done, but it's not really enough to warrant an A. I feel like I feel like some sort of seamless above and beyond uh, integration with some CGI. There are tiny elements of CG in here, so like that is kind of whatever. It it's there they stick out a little bit more than they probably should have so that's another thing that kind of goes against it uh but 85 out of 100 for the technical side again anime th it, this is definitely not hand drawn anime I, I feel like a studio ghibli something that goes that extra length to do all of that hand drawn would be something that would warrant an a this is definitely computer animated uh in that they drew and colored everything on a computer. Not that there's, you know, 3d renders of everything. There's only a few 3d rendered things in this, but it, it's just a little too polished. And I know that shouldn't be necessarily again. And it's not really against it. It's just, that's the, that's, that's the bar. And again, going above the bar is how you get an A and they didn't really go above the bar. So 85 out of, out of hundred in technical. Uh, now let's get into story. And this is where we start to see story as an isolated piece. If, if this were a piece of entertainment that existed on its own without uh, source material, this story would be fantastic. Actually, the story is fantastic. The fact that you can tell me a, a martial arts story that exists through the, the structure of a tournament and have that make sense and actually not get super bogged down by a bunch of convoluted rules like we saw in the first Mortal Kombat movie and actually the Bloodsport movie that Mortal Kombat was by and large modeled after. Uh, that, that, that's saying something. So we're looking at a 95 out of 100 for the, for the story. Again, as an isolated piece, story is very well done. To keep all of this stuff straight and also all of these characters straight and make me not be confused as to what is going on, to keep everything very coherent all the way through, that is a feat of grandeur. That is that is beautiful. And this movie does it very well. The reason it didn't get a perfect is because, the, the, and this is kind of, again, endemic of the original game story, the original comic book story, and the original movie story. There's, there is, again, this movie does it the best out of all of them, but there is an element of, well, if this is a tournament, then we should see some sort of elimination. Uh, the Bloodsport movie, again, that the, this generated from in its own, or origin way back when, when Mortal Kombat 1 was still just a twinkle in Ed Boon's eye, that movie gave us a little bit of a turn, more of a tournament feel in that we saw the bracket happen. 
in all of the Mortal Kombat stuff in the game, you see the bracket happen because you're part of the bracket. But in the storytelling side of things, in the original movie, in the and and again, all of the things that have happened that have not been game related, we don't see that. We don't see how the characters are picked to go against each other. We get a small almost taste of it here. Uh, Shang Tsung, when they open up the tournament, he kind of sort of makes a reference to the fact that certain fighters have been chosen to fight against other certain fighters and and then they start to teleport out of the room. So yes, we do get a very small taste of that here, but still it's not enough to be uh, as cathartic as you wanted it to be. Uh, so yeah, story 95 out of 100. Now we're moving into the biggest spoiler section because we really haven't gotten to spoilers yet, but the, the most spoilery section is mythology. Now, before we talk about mythology, I'm going to reveal my credentials, I guess. Uh, I have been a Mortal Kombat nerd since Mortal Kombat 1 in the arcades in 1992. I was... Pff, eight, nine years old, so like approximately second grade when it came out, and I lost a lot of money to that machine. And then in 93, when Mortal Kombat 2 came out, I continued to lose money. And then Mortal Kombat 3, uh, just, just, I have been playing these games forever. Now, a lot of people have that exact same credential. I was in the process and it, and it just kind of never really went anywhere because I had too many other things going on in my life, but I was in the process when Mortal Kombat Armageddon came out approximately. Uh, I was in the process of becoming a writer for one of, if not the largest Mortal Kombat fan site on the internet at the time. And uh, the, the, the reason I was going to write it is because they have a, a, a collection of the story. They have the, all of the retcons told in line that, you know, the canonical everything that happens in the story from Mortal Kombat 1 to Mortal Kombat Armageddon and everything in between. They have this uh, TRMK is the website. They have the, it's still up there. It has not been updated since Deception, I believe was the last time it was updated, which is why I wanted to join up and, and I was in contact with the, uh, the, the admin on it and all that jazz. It just, again, never really went anywhere. Cause I had a job and a full-time band and all of this other, uh, other stuff going on in my life. So that is another thing that not a lot of people can say, but also, uh, just, I have been I have immersed myself in the mythology for this, even the all of the non-game related material that has been released. So Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, uh, Mortal Kombat Conquest, everything, all of the mythologies possible. I have I've eaten it up as soon as it's come out and analyzed and, you know, all of this stuff. So while, again, there are probably people who know more about Mortal Kombat than me out there they're kind of few and far between. So that getting that out of the way, and I don't know how much of that is going to make it into it because I was kind of rambling. So I'm probably going to have to get really creative with the edit there, but that's just the long way of saying I have Mortal Kombat creds. Uh, so the mythology is something I am very well versed in. Now we have a couple of issues with the mythology. This is our lowest rated section. This is an 82 out of a hundred um, because we have some glaring issues with the mythology here. So first and foremost, in the original game, in the original story, the original comic book, everything that happened around about 92 to 96. And actually it was canon up until the reboot uh, up until Mortal Kombat 9 this is the original storyline this is what happened in the game with Raiden Raiden gave up his status as a god for this first tournament in order to participate in the tournament and have it be Mortal Kombat uh, for the sake of Earthrealm so the way the tournament exists in the mythology according to the original timeline this kind of got retconned uh, to a certain degree in the new timeline but was definitely not touched on at all in the original movie the way that it works is one realm wants to 
overthrow or conquer another realm. And in order for this realm to overthrow or conquer this realm, they have to conduct the tournament. And the tournament takes place over the course of 10 generations. Whoever, if you can win 10 generations in a row of the tournament, then you can then conquer said realm. Outworld has done this a number of times. Shang Tsung is a is an Earth Realm being. He is a sorcerer from Earth Realm who learns these black magics and learns all this dark magic and 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 has connections to Outworld. That is never really explained exactly how that happens, but it, you don't really need to know how the bad guy becomes the bad guy. He's just the bad guy. So he is the one conducting this tournament. So that means he is also a part of the tournament. He has a champion, technically speaking, though in the original mythology, the champion is more Shao Kahn's champion, and he's just part of the tournament as uh, a representative of Outworld. So the only two realms that are supposed to be a part of this are Earth Realm and Outworld, because that is where the conflict lies. Outworld wants to conquer Earth Realm. They have won nine tournaments in a row, and if they win this one, that puts them at the position where they could conquer Earth Realm. And then Liu Kang is born, who is the descendant of the great Kung Lao, who was the one who lost the first tournament, the great Kung Lao, though it was only just barely that did he lose. And Goro was the one who killed him. Goro is not infallible. It was a very close match. And he just happens to be the one to come out victorious against the great Kung Lao. Uh, we get then nine generations later to the 10th tournament and we have Liu Kang who again is a descendant of the great Kung Lao Liu Kang is the one that then defeats Goro and once he defeats Goro it is his responsibility because Shang Tsung is the one who technically wins the tournament every year or who is the one who uh uh and, and that's part of the storytelling issues, right? Because it, that's a little weird in in a in a tournament style thing. One victor means that one victor has bested everyone in the tournament. Well, Shang Tsung doesn't really best Goro, but once you defeat Goro, you move on to Shang Tsung. So it's kind of a goofy thing there. But anyway, so the Great Kung Lao is Liu Kang's ancestor. Great Kung Lao was the one that lost the very first Mortal Kombat tournament. Uh, depending on which version of the original storyline you read, uh, he technically is supposed to have lost to Shang Tsung, though some versions of it, like the novelization of it, uh, put him as losing to Goro and not Shang Tsung. But Shang Tsung is the champion. He's the one that's on top of the tournament. He is the one that you have to defeat in order to get past it. So now, then we fast forward nine generations. We have Liu Kang. Liu Kang is the first one in all of those other generations to defeat Goro since the great Kung Lao. So he then has to go up against Shang Tsung. He defeats Shang Tsung and does not kill him, but defeats him in battle in Mortal Kombat. Shang Tsung yields, and that is the end of the tournament. We have the original seven uh, characters that competed in the tournament. They are Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Sonya, Kano, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Raiden. So those seven characters are the ones that are supposed to be defending Earth. A handful of warriors on a leaky boat are supposed to save the world. Uh, yeah, so, and, and, and that... All of that happens to some degree. The thing that I'm taking issue with in the mythology of this movie is we have a bunch of other realms. We have Nether Realm in this because technically speaking, in the original storyline, Scorpion was still representing Earth Realm, uh, even though he was dead and there they added a whole lot to that story and they retconned a little bit uh, following that. But by and large, he was still Earth Realm repre representation. Uh, because there was a subplot that involved Nether Realm with him, does not mean he was representing Nether Realm. So that was an issue because we have Scorpion representing Nether Realm. We have the introduction of Quan Chi, which happened in the retcon version of this storyline in Mortal Kombat Nine. So that I, I'm not taking too much umbrage with. Uh, we we don't 
need a second or a third even explanation for how Jax lost his arms. Uh, again, this is a thing that happens in this movie at the first tournament. That's not the way it has ever happened in any of the Mortal Kombat mythologies. The first reason Jax has metal arms is because he voluntarily upgraded, quote unquote, upgraded himself in the original timeline. Then in the reboot timeline, as of Mortal Kombat 9, his arms get ripped off, but they get ripped off by Ermac and and that takes place after the first tournament actually takes place around about the time Mortal Kombat 3 would have happened in the original timeline because, again, they mirror each other very, very, very closely. Uh, so at about approximately the same time from the first to the current timeline, Jax upgrades or loses his arms and needs metal arms. In this movie, Goro removes Jax's arms and... Jax isn't even part of the tournament, so it's there. It's just broken mythology there. I understand it makes for better motivation uh, because we can see why Sonya wants to defeat Kano and Shang Tsung so bad because we know the character of Jax. Though, in every other version of this story... Sonya has another partner. Jax is her commanding officer. He's the guy that sits above her in the chain of command. She has a partner. That partner gets killed by Kano, and that is what lights her fire in order to go, you know, kill Kano and, and fight in this tournament. We don't touch on that in this. That they're, 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 I understand they're trying to slim out certain aspects of the story. I don't think that is one that needed to be slimmed down. I feel like keeping this tournament to just the parties that should be involved would have gone a great length to doing that because we don't need all of these people. We see, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a cameo from Nitara. So like there's, there, there's so much in here and, and let me consult my notes for two seconds. So we have the issue of Liu Kang should be the one that defeats uh, Goro and Shang Tsung in this. And what actually happens is Liu Kang is fighting Goro and Goro is playing with him. And then he says, uh, and then Shang Tsung says, okay, playtime's over. And then Goro just becomes this immovable object. Liu Kang cannot do anything to defeat this character, which again is very broken because Liu Kang is the virtuous one. Liu Kang is the powerhouse in this story uh so that didn't really sit well the the thing that really kind of sent that the end scene where this happens over the top for me was the fact that scorpion i understand this is a supposed to be about scorpion and i also understand that later in the mythology scorpion becomes the champion of the elder gods I, I love the way that happens in the original mythology. I honestly am uh, super appreciative of the way that's happening in the current mythology for Mortal Kombat. This, though, is neither of those things and somehow kind of an amalgamation of those things all at the same time. So Scorpion steps in in the middle of a fight. So it's a tournament it's supposed to be one on one. Scorpion step is, steps in before Goro can tear Liu Kang's arms and legs off uh, and pulls Goro's skull from his head and therefore killing Goro. So then Scorpion is technically the winner, but then they have, they, they do write in this convoluted part of, well, you defeated Goro. So now you represent outworld. And that's not the way that goes either. So <clears throat> it just, the, the mythology while super strong in most places in a couple of really key areas is not working out for me, especially if they plan on continuing making these movies and following the mythology that has been set up. Then if you make Liu Kang not as strong as he's supposed to be because he did not defeat Goro and Shang Tsung, then how is he going to defeat Shao Kahn, who is this crazy supreme ruler that is almost all powerful by, by the time we run into him circa Mortal Kombat 2? Uh, it's... Again, this is why this got an, an 82 from me out of 100 because, because it just, there was a better way to tell it. We, we have seen glimpses of that better way to tell this part of the story in the other iterations of this story, very specifically the Mortal Kombat 9 version of this story, uh, that it 
doesn't make sense to me that they would take this much storytelling leeway, the, the this many liberties with the story. When they went so far to smooth out all of the other issues that happened earlier in the story. So it just, it, it seemed a little imbalanced as far as the mythology goes. Uh, but yeah, so that's where we're sitting. We're sitting at 82 mythology. I know that was really long and rambling. And again, I don't know how much of this is going to make the edit because I, when I ramble, I try and edit around it anyway. So the total we have right now is 360 out of 400, uh, very potentially, one of the higher ratings. I don't know if it's the highest rating I've ever given a movie, but one of the higher ones for sure, because it is an even 90. Uh, we have, like I said, it is an A. So conclusion, let's, uh, let's stop rambling. Let's come to the end of this. Uh, I, if you are a fan of anime, this is a solid entry into your collection. Uh, this is not one for the kids. This is a very violent, as it should be, considering the source material. This is a very violent movie. Even if it is animated blood, it is still blood. There are still broken bones. Some <laughs> really wicked broken bones. Uh, not just in the x-rays, but in like some of the fight scenes, like just arms getting chopped in half and such awesome it if you are a fan of that kind of martial arts movie that kind of anime stuff this is definitely uh one for you if you are a fan of mortal Kombat, you will enjoy the hell out of this movie uh if none of that sounds like anything you'd be interested in then i just saved you a little bit of time even though i'm sure this video is close to the runtime of the movie uh i i cannot encourage people enough to see this that like these kinds of things that like anime that like Mortal Kombat that like fighting games if you like any of these things you're going to love this movie uh, thank you guys very much for joining me on this review of Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge what did you think of the movie if you have seen it what did you think of what I had to say about the movie again I know I I, I apologize for rambling so much but I, just, I this is my this is my jam man I love Mortal Kombat uh, let's have that conversation though down in the comment section you know let me know what you thought of the movie let me know what you think of me I guess uh, there is uh, website, generallynerdy.net. There is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. Uh, website is where you can get all the free stuff. Patreon is where you can help me keep the lights on and the camera rolling. So uh, all of that being said, thank you again, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button. Throw your kunai across the room and, and tell it to get over here. Uh, that was super corny. <laughs> but either way, hit the like button uh, or there's a dislike button if that's what you're into. And before we go, guys, always, always remember. Oh, hey, look, click the boxes below my face. You can see other things going on, on the channel. Anyway, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.